Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'd just like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today and pay my respects to Elders past and present. Uh, and also thank Karen Booth and the APNA team for the opportunity to come and talk to you about the Healthcare Homes trial um, that we've got running in Australia now. Um, so the intent is I give you a bit of an overview of how we've got to the healthcare home model um, and the concepts uh, around the approach, and then Donna can give you a bit of an overview of what it actually means uh, in practice. So I won't stay long in this slide because I'm sure you're very familiar with these kind of stats, but we started the healthcare home concept because of the rising incidence of chronic disease and the impact that that's having on our health system. So we have more than one in three Australians that have at least one chronic disease and that's expected to increase as our population ages. We also know that there is an increasing preventable hospitalisation for chronic disease and that people are presenting every two minutes in ED uh, with these chronic symptoms and that nearly a quarter of people who visited an emergency department felt that their care could have been provided by um, a primary practice. So on that basis, we, uh, a couple of years ago, in 2015, established a group called the Primary Health Care Advisory Group. It was led by Dr. Steve Hamilton, who may be familiar to some of you. He's been involved in a lot of health reform activities. He's a GP in Brisbane here um, and had been uh, a president of the AMA. So he, with a group of about 17 people, uh, they were experts from across the primary health care system and included um, Karen Booth, um, took about six months to come up with a set of recommendations for government, which was about how do we better manage people with chronic chronic and complex conditions. It involved a number of um, consultations. We went to every state and territory. We ran a survey uh, which called for consumers' thoughts on ex or, and experiences on primary care. And it clearly built on about 10 or 15 years of discussions around this topic in Australia. We also looked internationally uh, to see what was happening, uh, particularly in like-minded countries like New Zealand, um, America, and uh, some of our European counterparts. Over those six months, PCAG, as we affectionately called them, we have an acronym for everything in the government, um, came up with a series of recommendations, 15 recommendations, that went across four key themes. So they set, uh, focused on appropriate and effective care, system integration and improvement, what sort of payment mechanisms do we need to have to support a better primary care system, and then how do we measure that? What data do we need to actually ensure that we know that we're doing the right things? So the government accepted that recommendation in, it was about March or April 2016, and basically they accepted that that concept of a patient-centred medical home, which we've termed a healthcare home in the Australian context, um, would be set up in a trial and we'd looked at, look, we would look at a staged introduction of that model. So the key features of a healthcare home for um, this particular trial, there's several elements. So the Primary Healthcare Advisory Group had been very focused on making sure that patients, families and their carers were partners in this arrangement and that they were being actively empowered to be able to make decisions about their care and that the, we had a very patient-centred focus. The trial also requires voluntary patient enrolment. So this is where, when the patient is um, identified as eligible for the trial, they're required to enrol with that particular practice and basically say that they will be coming to that practice for, their, for the, the majority of their care. We recognise that that's not always possible, but the expectation is that you'll have um, that practice as your home base. Enhanced access and flexibility. So this comes from a couple of um, parts of the model that we've put to pl in play. So the enhanced access uh, and flexibility comes from, in part, by the bundled funding arrangement. So this is removing the requirements from the MBS, which um, Peter reflected on, which require that face-to-face -face engagement, and frees the practice up to have more innovative service delivery models. 
It also um, means that you can use things like digital health, telehealth, because you don't have those same requirements that the MBS um, construct applies, um, and that you'll be able to have proactive kind of follow-up. The team-based care is absolutely fundamental to this model. We acknowledge and support the concept that a team needs to be wrapped around the patient, and that's both members within the practice and outside the practice, and nurses are absolutely fundamental in that team. Patients are also required to nominate a preferred clinician. So while you'll have the home base being the practice, the, um, there will be a nominated clinician who takes the lead carriage for the patient. And this can include a nurse practitioner. We also require a shared care plan. So this is where, when a patient comes in and is enrolled, we're requiring that a shared care plan is established, all members of the team are identified, and this is the plan that is used to inform the clinical approach to care. We want the patient to be very well aware of it and use it um, to help support discussions and potentially to link in with other social services, for example, aged care or NDIS, where the patient might have engagement with a number of different um, inputs and support. The requirement for praxis, practices is to have an electronic shared care plan. So we've given the practices 12 months to be able to get the electronic um, software behind the plan. Um, recognising that uh, only 50% of the practices in the trial currently had, a plan, had the electronic version that met the requirements that we felt were important. We've also put out a set of minimum requirements that all of these software elements have to meet, um, and the software providers have responded by um, providing information uh, about their ability to meet those requirements to help practices make their choices. Uh, one of the um, key focuses that government gave to the primary health care advisory group was how do we better target the resources that we've got to, to the meet the needs of the people that really need it. So what underpins the healthcare home is a risk stratification model. So we have, um, through this process, uh, contracted precedents and CSIRO to come up with Australia's risk stratification model for primary health care. So this is a two-stepped approach where you will have an electronic system with an algorithm that's run over the patient, uh, over the practice population. It will draw out the eligible population by practice, and then the GPs and the and the team will go through and identify who they think is eligible for the trial, and then you run a. a um, a questionnaire with the patient which is based on the HARP tool, which is a tool which comes from Victoria that you may be familiar with, and that includes clinical and non-clinical questions. That then gives the patient a score which fits into one of these three tiers. Tier three is the most complex, tier one is the um, least complex, and then that attributes a payment. And that payment is bundled and paid to the practice every month. So unlike MBS, where it's a direct payment to a GP, this is a or, a, or to a nurse, this is a payment that goes to the practice and uh, enables flexibility in the way that that can be distributed, and also to support a different model of care. So we have um, one in four Australians have at least two chronic health conditions such as heart disease or diabetes. If that's you, then you know that there are a lot of things to keep an eye on, such as symptoms, medications, and GP and specialist visits. With so much on your plate, our health system can seem hard to navigate and disjointed. That's where Healthcare Homes comes in. It's a way of caring for people with chronic conditions, which puts the patient first. A healthcare home is a general practice or Aboriginal community controlled health service with one team coordinating your care. It could be the practice you currently visit, but with an emphasis on coordination to help you get the care and health services you need. Your healthcare home can be flexible in the way they look after you. If you want to talk to someone in your care team, you won't always have to have an appointment with your GP. You might call or message the nurse or they might call you to see how you're going. If you've been to your specialist or had a hospital stay, your care team will follow up. That way, they know all about the care that you receive, both inside 
and outside of your healthcare home. You are the focus of your care team and your care team will listen to your needs and preferences. They'll also work with you on a shared care plan. Your shared care plan will include your health goals and the care you receive from your usual doctor, specialist doctors, nurses and others like physiotherapists. Your shared care plan will include your health goals. Healthcare Homes is about giving you coordinated and consistent care. The best care for people with long-term conditions. For more information, go to the Healthcare Homes page. So we've developed a number of resources to try and help explain the concept, particularly for consumers who often um, ask the question, how is this different from the care I'm getting? And in some cases, it will mirror what's being delivered, but it does create a mechanism for um, better support um, and better opportunities for um, team members to be able to provide that kind of care. So the trial so far, the trial goes until the end of 2019. We're operating in 10 different PHN regions and they're reflected up on the screen. And to date, um, so it's up to 200 uh, healthcare homes will participate in the trial with up to, or the capacity to provide services for up to 65,000 people during that time. So at the moment, or as, as of 8th of May, we've got 175 practices who are participating and 1,679 patients who've been enrolled across 86 practices. And as we mentioned, we've developed a number of um, mechanisms and uh, software to support the trial, including the risk stratification tool. We've got education and training modules that support this patient-centred medical um, home model. We've provided funding to the PHNs who are absolutely integral in providing this um, support and integration of the model into primary care. So the opportunities for practice nurses the concept that the advisory group um, certainly took to their work and their recommendations was that team members, it gives the team members opportunity to work to their full scope of practice. Um, and it was important, um, particularly um, during the course of the discussions, um, to note that that's not always the way that we operate now. And creating this flexibility was intended to really um, ensure that people were getting joy out of practice and also to be able to use their skills to their full extent. As I mentioned, part of a healthcare team, um, healthcare team, and that was fundamental to the concept of healthcare homes and that we see nurses as absolutely integral to the, to the team, both in and outside of the practice. Support and incentives to deliver the proactive care. So the bundle payment frees the practice up to think about how they use this money differently um, and to be able to create that different um, flexible service delivery model. And we have, we've been doing a few, a few tours of practices around the country to see how they're going. And we spoke to um, one recently in New South Wales, and they were talking about how they're using some, some of the money to support different payment approaches for their nurse uh, in the practice, recognising that they were taking on an expanded role uh, with their patients. Lessons from our implement, implementation to date. Practice transformation takes time. That's a consistent finding across many trials that have gone before us, and it's no different with the healthcare homes. Um, we've deliberately chosen practices at varying points of capacity, so we can see what the implications of this model will have, um, and what that might mean for us if we were to roll it out further. Challenges with the new elements of the new model. Um, the bundle payment created some interesting tax questions for us when we were changing the way that we were making the payments. Um, we were able to address those and essentially the bundle payment does not change the relationship between a contractor and their employer, which was the predominant um, essence of the concern. Um, the risk stratification tool, it's a brand new tool. We had a fairly short time to develop it. There were some teething problems and it's clearly something that we need to validate test and validate during the course of the trial and refine as we go along. 
Also, da data quality in primary health care is fundamental to this model, and we know that that varies, and so this is a real quality improvement agenda uh, with our data. Patient recruitment, lots of time need to be spent with patients to understand the model, what are the benefits, what means to be involved in the trial, and so it will take time um, to reach our maximum numbers, which is an, a very ambitious target of 65,000. Um, role of PHNs, absolutely essential. It builds and leverages off what um, PHNs are already doing with their support in primary health care, uh, particularly around that change management agenda and around the data quality improvement agenda. Healthcare homes require engaged leadership. This is incredibly important. We're seeing that with the practices who've got that have been really able to take this model uh, forward and others are really trying to um, build that engagement within their practices, uh, but really critical to support any major reform or change. So I'm going to hand over to Donna now who can give you some um, more direct experience um, of a practice who's involved in the trial. Thank you. Hello everyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can any can everyone see me? I'm a bit short. Anyway, um, so I'll be talking about healthcare homes and my experiences um, in in the clinic. So this is where I work, healthway medical practice. Um, it's a small practice in Western Sydney, and um, just like me. <laughs> um, we have one GP, um, one um, a practice nurse, registered nurse, that's me, uh, one receptionist and practice manager, one medical practicing assistant, six visiting allied health practitioners, and we have 4,070 active patients um, and most of them have culturally and linguistically diverse background. So we do bookings, but mostly walk-in patients. So why healthcare homes? So um, we believe in team-based care approach, and we want um, an efficient and effective uh, system in place. So our cap is 110 patients, and currently we um, enrolled 30 patients. So um, to demonstrate more about um, how healthcare homes work, I um, chose um, a case study. So this is Mrs. M. Um, she's in her uh, 40s. She's married with three children. She have hypertension, diabetes type two, having um, HbA1c of 10.5 consistently. Um, uh, her BMI is 32. She's self-employed. Um, she has a, a grocery, so it's very tempting, really, <laughs> for her. Um, of course, poor diet. She got multiple medications and poor time management. So before enrolling to healthcare homes, um, these are her challenges. Um, she, sorry, that's, uh, she have random engagement with practitioners. So um, aside from seeing my GP, she also have two more GPs that she goes to. And then she skipped meals. Um, particularly breakfast and lunch. So when it comes to dinner time, um, she binge eats. Then um, she have extreme hypo and hyperglycemia, and then poor medication literacy. So Mrs. M's care team and how we work. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so the GP, um, the nurse, and receptionist, um, medical practicing um, 
as I said, yeah. So um, we all uh, work together and we do mini case conferencing um, to target what uh, the, the patient needs. So we also enrolled her to integrated care program where the integrated care nurse is going to li liaise um, between the hospital and the community. So if anything happens that she has to go to the hospital, then we're also updated of what's going on. Um, so uh, we book her to see the pharmacist and the pharmacist also can go to her house and review all her medications and all the, you know, if she's taking um, over the counter meds as well. So we book her to see the endocrinologist, um, the podiatrist, dietitian, optometrist, cardiologist, and also we include the husband and family to the care plan because that's where she's going to get the, the motivation. So the outcomes to date, um, changes in, uh, in her health. Her BMI is down to 31.2. Um, um, so she's taking medication uh, regularly and she knows why and when uh, to take it. Her diet is very, like it's improved a lot. So she's um, uh, eating breakfast, um, taking lunch pack, and then um, she's not binge eating during din dinner time. But of course, it's hard to not eating, you know, like tempting food like biscuits because she has a grocery. So, well, we're still, you know, um, we're still uh, improving to that. And then um, her blood sugar level monitoring, um, she's taking it, uh, she's testing it two times a day. So changes in lifestyle, um, she's trying to exercise. It's not there yet, but we're still convincing her to do exercise. <laughs> um, then uh, regular contact with patients. So um, for the past six weeks, she's been coming to the clinic once a week. Um, just because to super supervise with her medication, but now we can release her because um, she knows how to take medications and all that. But I, I still keep contact with her, so if there's any problems, you know, we can talk over the phone. This is the last slide, by the way. <laughs> so learning, learnings and next steps, challenges. Um, designated person to pitch the healthcare home. So it's really important um, to designate the person to talk to patient about healthcare home. And I'm so glad that I'm not that person. It's the doctor's job. <laughs> so um, then getting the patient used to coordinate care management, fear of change, not seeing the GP. So some of my patients actually, um, they, they just come to you know ask for prescriptions and they're going to comment afterwards that oh i've seen the doctor for a prescription i feel well now so we're trying to change that mindset that instead of doing that you know uh, make her the time that she's waiting in um, to see me or to see the podiatrist or dietitian um so the, the next one is getting more specialists on board in the new health system because it's new. So we're still trying to engage them to the healthcare home. So successes, um, nurse and other health team are more involved, better communication with the team, um, system in place to avoid confusion and duplication. The next steps, uh, continue, we're still going to continue enrolling patients, um, share or promote successes. So we're planning to do some videos of um, patients who, uh, who enrolled in the healthcare home um, and uh, 
and then um, just play that video recording in the waiting room, just so we can, you know, share to other patients as well. And lastly, additional evaluation, so um, surveys and uh, feedbacks from patients. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.